the real reason the Rifleman went off the air. Without a doubt, The Rifleman is one of the legendary TV shows in American history. The show starred Connor as widowed rancher Johnny Crawford and Lucas McCain as his kids. Together with his family, he lived in a small town in New Mexico, a village that came to be one of the most critical scenes in the show and one of the places where legendary marksmen grew and perfected their arts. Today, the program is acknowledged as one of the best television westerns of all time. Just like all other shows, the film went off the air and here is the real reason The Rifleman went off the air. The Tale of the Rifleman For five seasons, viewers followed the program as McCain toted his gun about the ranch in one of the most renowned TV shows of the late 1950s and early 1960s. Executive producer Arnold Laven and producer Sam Peckinpah became superstars in directing westerns. The Rifleman had an excellent cast and set, and the dramatic unfolding of life lessons and character disclosures had viewers on edge of their seats until the very end. The Craft of Bargaining In the beginning, when Chuck Connors was given the role of Lucas McCain, he declined due to the poor compensation being provided. When casting the part, the show's creators thought for sure that James Whitmore and John Anderson would take their salary offer. They thought Connors was excellent for the character, but since it was a television program, they didn't have the funds to satisfy his demands. After that, however, they discovered a startling finding. Actors' Chemistry Connor had a movie office smash in 1957 with Disney's Old Yeller, in which he co-starred alongside captivating child performers Tommy Kirk and Kev Kikorin. When the directors observed the on-screen rapport between the actors and the way Connors interacted with the child, they realized they had to pay him more. They did something that surprised even Connors after making the discovery. They increased the stakes, and Connors accepted their updated offer. The Gun Fun The producer of The Rifleman, Arnold Laven, said in an interview that the iconic rifle used in the program by Connors was the same rifle John Wayne used in the smash hit Western Stagecoach. It was purportedly an 1892 44-40 Chester rifle. Connors fired 12 bullets with the gun in the iconic opening titles that appeared before each fresh new weekly program. Turns out the pistol was somewhat out of position. According to the show's notes, settings, and cultural documents, the Rifleman took place in the 1870s and 1880s. McCain carried a fantastic customized Winchester model 1892 with a huge ring lever which enabled him to accomplish that spectacular cocking by rotating the pistol in his palm. Perhaps he was also a time traveler. That firearm hadn't yet been produced. Was it historical errors that forced the program to take off the air? Sam Peckinpah, a well-known writer and director, had written a pilot episode of The Rifleman for the long-running Western series Gunsmoke three years before, but it had been rejected. Peckinpah's presence lent credibility to the idea since he was one of the most accomplished Western directors of his age. Peckinpah changed the Gunsmoke screenplay by altering the protagonist's character named from John McCain to Lucas McCain and adding a son to the plot. Further evolution was in the pipeline. Emphasizing Emotion Arnold Laven, the film's producer, thought it would be a good idea to change a few things before beginning production. McCain went from being a pistol expert to a rifle ace because of this alliteration, and he also made McCain a widower who was parenting his kid on his own. As a consequence of the initial adjustment, Lucas McCain was ranked number 32 on TV Guide's ranking of the 50 greatest TV dads of all time, which appeared in the June 20, 2004 edition of the magazine. Fantastically Bilateral Lucas McCain not only had a 99.99% success rate while firing his weapon, but he also seemed equally adept at doing it with either hand. McCain would switch hands while shooting at will in a few episodes, yet he always managed to hit his target. Neither Connors nor any of his co-stars ever brought up his acting ability. Naturally, viewers took note, and they haven't let this remarkable achievement slip their minds. He had a bad habit Cigarettes weren't considered the spawn of the devil back in the 1950s when The Rifleman was filmed, yet Lucas McCain was only shown smoking a cigarette once on the show. In real life, Chuck Connors smoked 60 cigars a day. 
He died at the age of 71 in 1992 after suffering from lung cancer. However, his passing wasn't the reason the program was canceled. Hold on and find out why. Manly Spinoff McCain's father, Lucas, had several in-depth discussions with his son, Mark, on the importance of doing the right thing at all times. But he also had some more mature friends, such as a plainsman. In 1959, Michael Ansara's plainsman character was featured in two episodes of The Rifleman, and he was later given his own series, Law of the Plainsman. Unfortunately, the pioneering program was ahead of its time and failed to attract many viewers. Widower's Peak Lucas McCain's portrayal proved to be a pioneering parent on American television. As far as we know, he was the first single parent to be represented in the media. Connor said that the show's realistic and endearing depiction of the father-son bond was due in large part to Sam Peckinpah's screenplay. The show's depiction of a single father was pioneering at the time, but it has now become a prevalent topic in contemporary television. All-Around Athlete Brooklyn native Chuck Connors played on the first 1946 Boston Celtics squad. The first professional basketball player to break a backboard was also him, and he had a short basketball career with Brooklyn Dodgers and the Chicago Cubs, as shown. Connors' athletic prowess was quickly noticed by scouts and coaches, and he quickly began to achieve great success in his chosen field. He left the Celtics to join the Brooklyn Dodgers, his favorite team as a kid. After that, Connors played first base with the Chicago Cubs starting in 1951. The cherry on top is that the Chicago Bears picked him. Maybe playing all those sports developed Connors' outstanding ambidextrous abilities. He seemed to be physically capable of excelling in whatever endeavor he attempted. If he were around now, who knows what profession he'd be having. We must never give up on our dream. The Bloodiest Program on Television the Rifleman, along with its contemporaries The Untouchables, was widely regarded as television's most violent series when it first aired. McCain essentially invented the first semi-automatic weapon, which greatly increased his rate of fire. Marshal Mika Torrance Paul Fix, had been an alcoholic but was now sober. He had a hard time maintaining order in Northfolk and often sought McCain's assistance in this regard. Torrance would go to Sweeney's pub to forget his problems whenever life became rough. In order to get control of a situation and get Marshall out of the way, the bad guys would often compel him to drink. Johnny Crawford's Favorite Scene Johnny Crawford has a soft spot for the episode in which his character, played in the show, also had to choose between living with his father on Earth and his mother in Heaven in an episode called The Vision. The actor said in an interview that he was quite unwell with a high temperature, thus filming took nine days instead of the normal three. It's been a long time since I saw it, but I do recall thinking it was really inventive and strange at the time," he said. The Twilight Zone was also a huge part of my life at the time, so you can see where my interests lie. Crawford was genuinely ill I understood that if the person who taught me on the film, who was also a social worker, it was her obligation to ensure that if I was unwell, I was taken off the set until I was in full health," Crawford added. I tried not to tell her since I didn't want to slow down production or anything, but I think it was clear. Famous Rat Packer and performer incomparable Sammy Davis Jr. guest featured in two episodes of The Rifleman, Two Ounces of Tin, and The Most Amazing Man. He portrayed Tip Corey, a vicious and brutal sniper, and a cowboy called Wade Randall. Audiences cheered as Davis shot targets and twirled his rifle. With a roster of such interesting guest personalities, it's hard to understand why the program ever went off the air. When she realized or made the decision that I was really sick, we were in the middle of a scene in which they were supposed to be wrapping me in ice. I guess it was the first episode we really shot for that episode, and I had a high temperature that they were trying to bring down. Outbreak of Smallpox In the television series, it's reported that Mark McCain's mother died of smallpox in the Indian Territory of Texas in the 1870s. The sickness had been there since before humans started keeping detailed records. It had even been found in Egyptian mummies. During the 18th century, smallpox was endemic across the globe, killing anywhere from 50% to 90% of people. However, the disease had made its way to the Americas by the late 19th century with red fever, yellow fever, and Lyme disease. Thus, it's possible that families still lost loved ones to this illness at that time. 
detaching mouse ears after the first year when the age requirement was lowered to 12 Johnny Crawford was no longer allowed to be one of Disney's Mouseketeers he then starred in a live NBC show of little boy lost followed by a stint on the Lone Ranger and many more Crawford was just 12 years old when he was cast in the rifleman Johnny Crawford had a lot more in store for him the actor went the road that many teenage TV stars of the 1950s chose he became a musical possessed teen idol and launched a singing career in perspective Crawford's decision was wiser than that of many of his contemporaries in the 1960s Johnny Crawford had five songs that were in the top 40 of Billboard's Hot 100 the highest charting being Cindy's birthday which peaked at number eight that year Crawford lost his brave fight against Alzheimer's disease and the COVID-19 virus in 2021 Crawford enlists an army following his singing success Johnny Crawford shifted gears in 1965 and served in the US Army Crawford served two years in the army during which time he contributed his filmmaking expertise to create instructional videos for soldiers he served honorably until the end of 1967 by which time he'd risen to the rank of captain some months later he had a recurring role on Hawaii 5 as a veteran the rifleman why did it get canceled actor Johnny Crawford's advancing age and poor viewership apparently contributed to the cancellation of the rifleman later in an interview with the rifleman the actor discussed the series conclusion saying a quote from the Chuck Connors page you know I never did know precisely why and I wasn't that bothered at the time since after having completed it for five years I was keen to do something new personally I thought the program was growing stale and that writing wasn't as excellent as it once was our finest season was the first and I still believe it was our most successful in terms of viewership among riflemen's many teachings is the need to forgive others as seen in the Marshall Lucas McCain believes that everyone is deserving of a second opportunity and hires a formerly incarcerated man to work on his ranch in the Sheridan story the general responsible for amputating the soldier's limb during the Civil War pays a visit to the ranch after apologizing to the former Confederate soldier General Philip Sheridan offers to pay for his medical bills 